Florida Bible College Equipping students for a life of lasting commitment to Jesus Christ Open up your eyes, time to see the light Florida Bible College As a young man, I was told about the whole issue of salvation and going to heaven, many different things, but what I was really told the most was this, and I believe what I was told, millions of people throughout time have been told similarly the same things, and that would be this, that good boys go to heaven and bad boys go to hell. I was always told that if I was good, I could go to heaven, but if I wasn't, I wasn't going to go to heaven. And that really worked as a governor on my life, especially in my younger years, because I wanted to go to heaven. And I certainly was afraid of not going to heaven. And so, you know, that really caused in my mind, though, an uncertainty. Well, am I going to heaven or not? And I really became much fearful about death. And I was so grateful that when I was 16 years of age, there was a young lady that was in my class in school that invited me out to a meeting. And at that meeting, it was filled with young people my own age, but they really knew how to go to heaven. And they were excited about it. They talked about it. They sung about it. They acted like it. They were just great kids. Well, it was at that meeting that there was a gentleman that sat on a stool, and on that stool he opened up his well-worn Bible, and he began by telling us that we can really trust the Bible, that it really is God's mind and God's heart on paper. And he was so good at it, he explained to us how that the Bible is scientifically accurate, prophetically accurate, archaeologically accurate, even the saleability and the longevity of the Bible being around so long. But what really struck me was when he said, even with all of that, the Bible is true because it will work in your life. Well, now I lean my mind and my heart into knowing more about what does the Bible then, if it is God's mind on paper, have to say what we have to do to go to heaven. Well, then he clearly explained to us using the Old Testament and the New Testament that we're all sinners. In other words, we've all missed the mark of God's perfection. We've fallen short of it. He then showed us that as a result of our sin in our life, that we were born separated from God because we have that sin nature, we have propensity to sin, but also because of the deeds that we have done. So we're separated from God, but that God doesn't want us to be separated from Him. He wants us to have an eternal relationship with Him forever, which means when we die, we go to heaven. And then he shared with us in the ver a verse in the Bible that said that if we're trying to be good to go to heaven, because kind of like the natural response is, if we're bad, we're going to hell. If we're good, that must mean we're going to heaven. He said all of our good works would never get us into heaven. We'd have to be absolutely perfect. You know, Revelation 21, 27 says that if we sin, we'd have to be condemned to hell, and then we'd have to be perfect to go to heaven. Could never tell a lie. But that wasn't the verse that really sealed the deal for me. It was that wonderful verse, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, that says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that it's not of our good works. It's nothing we do ourselves. And again, it's simply by placing our faith alone in Christ. Well, then I found out that Jesus died and he rose again. Now, that wasn't too new to me because our family did celebrate Easter, which is the resurrection of Christ. But I never knew why. I kind of thought he was a poor religious martyr that died, but then he came back to life, and, you know, that was a good thing. But I didn't know why he died. When he died, he took all my sin on himself, and he satisfied the payment for sin when he died, and he rose again. And what God did is he said, it is now finished through Christ. And if I would simply place my faith alone in him, I could have everlasting life. So, my friend, that night I realized that going to heaven was not by my good works, it was by what Christ did for me on the cross and what connected me to him was my simple childlike faith. You know, John 3.16 happens to be the most memorized verse in the Bible, but often the least understood. And that verse says, For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'd like to show you an illustration that I was shown the very night that this made sense to me. The illustrations seal the deal on understanding it that I'd like to share it with you. So watch carefully as I do this, and that way maybe it'll be made clear to you what salvation is about, and you can share it with others. 
that man said this. He said, let my right hand represent you and me. That's everyone, including you. And then he said, let my wallet here represent our sin. And the Bible says we all have sin on us. So he put the wallet on his hand, indicating that we're all sinners by nature and choice. And then he explained that because we're sinners, when we die, we'll have to spend eternity separated from him. We're already separated from him. We'd have to spend eternity separated from him. The Bible then says that Jesus Christ loves us, but to go to heaven, we'd have to be perfect. So then he took the wallet off his hand, and then he showed me his hand saying, to go to heaven, you've got to be perfect, no sin on you. But what's the problem is, we will never be good enough. We will never be perfect to go to heaven. And then he shared the verse that even good works won't get us there. So even if I turned over a new leaf and I cleaned myself off, <laughs> I still have sin on me. That sin problem is a very serious problem that I as a person could never solve. Then he said, let my right hand represent you and me. Excuse me, let my right hand represent God. It took on flesh. And the Bible says that God loves us, but he hates our sin. And so if this is Jesus Christ, here he's perfect. Here I am with my sin on me. And my sin separates me from Christ and it separates me from heaven. So I've got a real problem. Well, the Bible says God loves me, but he hates my sin. And so what happens is Jesus Christ took all my sin on himself and he died and he rose again. And that if I'd simply place my faith in him, I could have everlasting life. Remember that verse? Watch again. You and me with our sin here. For God so loved you and me that he gave Jesus Christ for us on the cross when he took all our sin on himself. And that if I would simply place my faith in Christ who died and rose again, that I could have everlasting life. Well, that's my salvation story. But that truth is found all throughout Scripture. So maybe that truth will be your truth. And you too will have a salvation story to share with others. So why don't you right now really have a little conversation with the Lord and say, Lord, I know I've done things wrong and I know I don't deserve to go to heaven. But right now, I am placing my faith in you. And I want to thank you for dying on the cross and rising again and giving to me the free gift of eternal life. If you do that, 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written to you that believe in the name of the Son of God so that you could know you have eternal life. That means when you trust Christ as Savior, you don't have to doubt it any longer. You can know that you have eternal life. Would you do that right now? Now, if you have any questions, or if you are doing that right now, why don't you write me? Send me a note. I'd like to hear about it. Answer your questions. Rejoice with you. And do anything that I can so that you can know that Jesus Christ is not only the Savior, but that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Florida Bible College